All right, guys, real quick on how to operate the new POS system. We're prompted to enter in our passcode to access the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter in my passcode. And then you see here, this is our main screen. It has the register, orders, and refund button up at the top. And then you see all the other apps on the bottom. So to put in an order, go to register. Just like our old POS, the categories on the left side and all the items on the right side. So to start placing in an order, um, you wanna pick a takeout or a dine-in, which most of the time in our case will be a takeout. Then you can put in the customer's name by adding a note. You can do it by adding customer or add note. Add note, I have learned, is the faster way to do it. Um, so I'm just gonna put in my name for the customer's name under the note and then start putting in the order. Let's go ahead and do, say a house salad. Once you're done with that item, hit the done button on the right hand side, on the bottom right hand side. Uh, let's do an order of crab wontons. And as you can see here, most of our items will have an online tab under each item. Um, this is for online ordering. It shows you there the difference um, in price for our online menu. Um, since I'm making one for a regular takeout, which is you know either a delivery or a direct call-in order, I would go ahead and hit done. And uh, let's go ahead and do a hibachi meal or a couple of hibachi meals maybe. Uh, if you guys want, you can also use the quantity. If you have two or three of the same things, you can go ahead and hit the quantity. Let's see here. See two of the hibachi chickens. And then we're prompted uh, to the modifiers, which has like the soup salad, the no veggie extra rice, the no fried rice extra veggie. And of course, we also have that online tab for um, online order. But in this case, we're just doing a regular order, not an online order. Let's see, I'm gonna do a salad for this order. Hit done when you're done. And let's do one regular maki roll. Say an avocado roll, done. And this is how it looks like once you punch the items in. All right, next I'm gonna show you guys how to remove or reduce an item. Let's see here. So say we want to remove one of the hibachi chickens, all you have to do is click on the item and reduce the quantity. In this case, I'm reducing it to one. Once you're done with that, hit done. And if you want to remove an item, since these orders have not been sent out yet, we haven't saved or paid for it yet, you are still able to do all the um, remove and reduce items without having to put in any code. So um, say we want to remove that avocado roll, all you have to do is just click on that avocado roll item and go ahead and just delete that item. And that, that takes care of the, the removal of it. Uh, say we want to remove the hibachi chicken, go ahead and hit that hibachi chicken item and delete. Same way, if we want to add another order of the same item that you have already placed on the screen, you can go ahead and hit that one. Say we want to add one more crab wonton, plus one makes it two. Once you're done, hit done. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and delete the crab wontons now. And now we only have that house salad and let's go ahead and save it. Okay, so this is how we would settle an order that has already been placed. Go to orders, and as you can see here, one is still an open order. It's color-coded for open, it's yellow, for paid, it's green, refunded is red, like that. Um, and you can always search up the orders by sorting it or filtering it to either if you want to see just the orders that, that are open or if you search just the open orders will show up and if you were to 
search it by paid orders then only the paid orders show up um, in this case I'm just going to set it as all all paid all open or refunded are gonna show on the list I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and add payment when you're ready to make the payment since it's a card payment then you go ahead and hit charge and then you can insert it you can tap it if it has that tap sign or you can swipe it as well okay I'm gonna go ahead and tap it this time and two receipts would print out one for us and one for the customer the first one is the one that we would have the customer sign and if they want to fill in the tip there's that tip line there and this is very important too you want to go ahead and hit done on that page otherwise it'll automatically void it if we don't hit that done button um, so yeah very important whenever you're done with settling an order after the payment is complete then you want to go ahead and hit that done button uh, before you do anything else it'll have the option on the bottom for Grubhub, DoorDash, or online order. Don't forget to hit done after you're done with payment. And that's it, that's for online and delivery orders. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how to add a tip on an order. Say we wanna add a $1 tip to this order, right? What you wanna do is go to tips, and then you will see that order that we had just done, which is right here, 217. And you can enter in the tip here manually for a dollar. Once you're done with that, hit done. Confirm this tip. If it's the right amount, then yes, confirm tip. And that's all you have to do for entering the tip. There's also another way to do so you could always go to transactions and click on the transaction that you want to add tip to. It's grayed out because we have already added the tip, but in this screen, you can actually edit the tip amount. Say you wanna do $2 instead of the $1 or change it to $2 instead of the $1. Just change it manually to the correct amount and hit done once you're done. Is this tip of two dollars correct as, uh, as long as it's the correct uh, amount then confirm tip and that's all as far as adding the tip so you could do it under transactions or tips and remember that whoever takes care of that transaction has to be the one that enters in the tip as well just something um, to remember whoever does the transaction or the order he or she will also be the one to enter in the tip Okay, so there's two ways in performing a refund. One way is to go to the refund button and manually enter the refund amount that you want to refund back to the customer's card. This is done only if you have the actual card itself for us to be able to either insert or swipe or to tap. If you don't have the card in front of you, we don't have it physically, we are unable to do this feature. So what you wanna do is you wanna to go to transactions, which is the way that I recommend you doing, and click on the payment that you need to do a refund on. Um, say we wanna do a refund on this one. Here, you see there is a refund button here. Go ahead and click that. It's asking, are you sure you want to issue a refund of the 417? If it is the, the correct amount that you need to do a refund on, then yes, go ahead and hit the refund button. And this automatically refunded it back to the customer's card. It doesn't print out the receipt automatically. However, if the customer asks for a receipt, you can always go to go back to that transaction, which was this one that we just did a refund on, and hit receipts, and you can print it manually. And 
it'll print out that um, refund receipt that we did for the 417. You know, it looks like this. Okay. Now I want to show you guys what you guys will have to do as far as cashiering in goes. This is for uh, the beginning of the shift only. We don't have that um, cashier in or cashier out uh, feature. We do have the closeout feature, which I'll show you guys too in a little bit, but this is for um, cashiering in every beginning of the shift. So if you go to register again, register, and then the three dotted lines here on the top uh, right hand corner has that open cash drawer. You wanna do open cash drawer. And then at the very beginning of the shift, you wanna click on the add cash. And we always have 150 in our drawer, right? So you wanna put in 150 and reason for adding is cash in. And then this is very important. You go ahead and hit continue, which then will automatically open the drawer. Then what you would have to do from there is count the cash in there manually and make sure that it adds up to 150 along with all the coins and the paper bills. Um, we did already cash in today, so I can't continue on this one. But yeah, that's what you would have to do once um, you enter in that 150 amount and cash in for the reason for adding. Hit continue, drawer will open, count it manually, make sure it adds up to the 150. That's all you have to do as far as cashering in goes in the morning, nothing else. And then at the end of the day, you will always have this close out button on the right hand side of the screen. All you have to do is hit that close out button and it'll show you the list of transactions made today. Here, all you have to do is just hit that close out all devices button. That's all. Then once you hit that close out all devices button, a receipt will automatically print out and that would be our closing receipt for the day. And that's again under close out every night. I'm gonna take out the money money for the cash sales for that day by going to register, the three dotted line on the top, open cash drawer, and then put in the amount of the cash sales for that day. And the reason for removing is for cash sales. And once you hit continue, it'll automatically open the drawer take out the money, the amount that you have made for that day for cash sales, and that's it. And you can put the money in the save, just like usual. Um, if you guys ever need to look up uh, tips, you know, after lunch shift, go to reporting, and you'll see the tip amount is here. And that's how you would look up tip. I wanna show you guys the help button that we have that I was talking about. You can always hit that help button if there's any issues with the system, anything you need help with. You can have them call you. You can go down to the call me button. And this is modifiable. You can, this is our restaurant number, but you can also add your own cell phone number for them to call you on. Um, and then just hit the call me button once you're done. But yeah, that's there and you can always use that anytime you need help with the support system or the support team.